This is the Kenyan teacher one more time. We review question number three as tested in the year 2022 chemistry paper two. Question number three tested the candidates on the understanding of the topic electrochemistry. Electrochemistry is a topic discussed at form four. Question three, part A. Use the following cell notation to answer the questions that follow. So we have aluminum half cell on the left connected to lead half cell on the right and the electromotive force that is E naught for the cell being given as positive 1.53 volts. So part one, state what the symbol forward stroke represents for each half cell. So we have it here and we also have it here. So this forward stroke that appears in half cells actually represents what we call the phase boundary. It is the phase boundary or we can call it the interface or even separation. Separation between the electrode and the electrolyte. So any of those three, either face boundary, interface, or separation, would be the meaning of the symbol as used in half cells. For one mark, Roman 2, we are asked to write the equation for the cell reaction. So here, a candidate needed to have known that when doing cell notation, we've always agreed that the cell, or rather the half cell, that undergoes oxidation is the one that we put on the left hand side. So for this case, aluminium will be oxidized and lead would be reduced. So as we write the equation, we shall begin with aluminium in solid state which will then be oxidized to aluminum ions. Reacting with lead ions, which shall be in aqueous state, but these ones will be reduced to lead metal in the reaction. So once this reaction has taken place, aluminum will be oxidized to its ions, and lead will be reduced from the ions to the element. So then we go ahead and balance the charges with a 2 on aluminium, a 3 on lead ions, a 2 on aluminium ions, and a 3 on lead atoms for the next mark. To Roman 3 of question 3, we are told that given that, given that E0 value for the reduced species, the reduced half cell, that is lead, we are then asked to calculate the E0 value for the oxidized half cell, which is aluminium. So here, the only thing a candidate should have known is that E0 of cell, of a complete cell, E0 of a complete cell is given by the E0 of the reduced half cell minus E0 of the oxidized half cell. So once we, we know this relation, we shall then put in our values. The reduced is lead and it has been given as negative 0 0.13. And the oxidized is what we are looking for. So we shall look for the E0 of the oxidized species. And of course the E cell 
has been given up here as positive 1.53 volts. So that is what we have here. And with this, we can then go ahead and get the E0 of the oxidized species as negative 0 0.13 minus 1.53. And that gives us a figure of negative 1.66 volts. It is 2 marks. So we shall give one whole mark for that relation and one mark for the answer. 2 part 4. State one use of electrochemical cells. Electrochemical cells are simply source of electrical energy. So this was the marking point, but a candidate would go ahead and tell us that once we obtain this electrical energy, then we use it in appliances like radios, like stopwatches, and many others. There are quite a number that we can't list to conclusion. So the marking point was electric, electrochemical cells are source of electrical energy. We proceed to the next question. Next question is part B. So part B, we are told that figure 2 shows a cell that is used to electrolyze water. So here we are. We have electrode B, electrode A, and water. Now, for identification of the two electrodes, a candidate is supposed to check the arrangement of the cells. This long, thin line here represents the positive terminal. And the short, thick line here is the negative. Then, the electrode connected to the positive terminal we call anode. And that connected to the negative terminal we call cathode. So A is cathode and B is anode. With that, let's continue to try to answer the questions that were set based on the diagram in figure 2. Part 1. State why it is necessary to add dilute sulfuric 6 acid to the water. This is quite easy. We add dilute sulfuric 6 acid to the water to ionize it. So the first answer to this was to ionize the water. A candidate had the option of telling the examiner that we add dilute sulfuric 6 acid to make water a better electrolyte. To make water a better electrolyte. There was also an option of adding dilute sulfuric 6 acid to increase the conductivity to increase the conductivity of water. Any of those three for one mark. Then part two of question three B state the electrolyte, rather the electrode, at which oxygen is produced and give a reason. So now we know Oxygen is produced when we discharge the hydroxyl ions. Hydroxyl ions are negatively charged, so they will migrate to the positive electrode. And that is our B. So we are told to state it and give a reason. The, the electrode is B for a half a mark. And then we continue to, set, to state that it is the anode. That would be the reason why we mention that oxygen would be produced at B. So it is a nod for the next half mark. A candidate had an option of telling us that the hydroxyl ions, which actually produce oxygen, they do migrate to the anode as alternative to the reason given in the first case. 
Now, to part three, we are then asked to write the equation that produces oxygen. So here, as we've agreed, oxygen comes as a result of discharge of hydroxyl ion. When you do so, we normally form water and our gas oxygen. Then we balance with a two on water and a four on hydroxyl ions. That means that this reaction is normally accompanied by four moles of electrons for the next mark. We proceed now to Roman 4. Roman 4 is stating that after electrolyzing the water for 88 seconds, the volume of oxygen gas collected was found to be 23 cubic centimeters. So we are now being asked to determine the volume of hydrogen gas that would be collected at the cathode. So here, the candidate should have known that at anode, we usually discharge hydroxyl ions to give water, to give water, actually two moles of water, one mole of oxygen, and four moles of electrons, just as we have discussed in the previous question. Then, at cathode, we will discharge hydrogen ions, and usually the number of moles of electrons lost at anode should be the same number of electrons that are, are accepted so, we've just lost four moles of electrons at anode. We will then accept four moles of electrons at cathode to give us actually two moles of hydrogen gas at cathode. But one thing I want to state here is when we are asked to write the equation for the reaction that produces hydrogen, then we shall then reduce these balancing figures to the simplest ratio. Meaning, we shall have two moles of hydrogen ions, accepting only two moles of electrons to give us one mole of hydrogen gas. But, for purposes of volume, we are then forced to use equal number of electrons lost here to be the same as those that are accepted at cathode. Now what we notice after this is, for every one mole of oxygen produced, we normally have two moles of hydrogen. So if I have 23 cubic centimeters for oxygen, it means therefore that volume of hydrogen gas would be double, and that would be 2 times 23, and that gives me 46 cubic centimeters for the next mark. The final question for number three asked us to now calculate the amount of current used. Here, the conditions applied for electrolysis were not specified. So, we need molar gas volume at conditions that were applied. And because the question was not specific, a student could go for either the molar gas volume at room temperature and pressure, which, which happens to be 24,000 cubic centimeter. Another student would actually go for the molar gas volume at STP and use a figure of 22,400. Those two were allowable for this part of the question because the examiner wasn't specific. So, by getting the molar gas volume at RTP or STP, the candidate scored the first half mark. The next thing we were to do is now to relate this molar gas volume to the volume or the moles of oxygen that would be produced. So if we look at our equation, one mole of oxygen is produced when we involve four moles of electrons. The interpretation of this in terms of electrochemistry is that every mole of oxygen needs four Faradays to be released, which 
are equivalent to 4 multiplied by 96,500 coulombs. Doing this multiplication by 4 would earn our students the next mark. The next thing we would do is to ask ourselves that if 24,000 cubic centimeters of oxygen, which is the molar gas volume at RTP, would be produced by 4 multiplied by 96,500 coulombs as quantity of electricity. How many or how much quantity of electricity would we use to produce only 23 cubic centimeters that were actually produced as per the instructions of the question? This, by cross multiplication, would give 23 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 96,500 coulombs then we divide by 24,000. That gives 369.9166 coulombs. This would be the quantity of electricity we would need to produce 23 cubic centimeters of oxygen. So moving on to our word of max, multiplication by 23, the next half mark, division by 24,000 another half a mark. Then moving on, we are asked to find amount of current used. So we would now think of how do we get this quantity of electricity. Q is given by current I in amperes multiplied by time in seconds. So we found Q to be 369.9116. 0.9166, sorry. And current is what we are being asked to calculate, but time has been given as 88 seconds. So to get I, we shall divide 369.9166 by 88. And that gives us a current of 4.2036. Ask the answer to our question. The space could not accommodate all our working, so we have infringed on the space set for answering other questions. We are sorry for that. Now, we've so far awarded two marks, half for getting the molar gas volume, half for multiplication by 4, half for multiplication by 23, half for division by 24,000. So one more mark to go. We shall award half for multiplication by 88 and finally the answer another half mark with that we've come to the end of question number three as tested in the year 2022 chemistry paper two the question tested electrochemistry as a topic thank you for being with us